their typical siblings, 11-year-old Naya shooting hoops outside and doing handstands inside. She takes a while to warm up, but when she does, you know, she's a really funny kid. Just listen to my voice. I'm totally an alien, alien princess. And soon to be six-year-old right. Luca doing flips in the trampoline and cruising on his bike around the neighborhood. Luca, what you see is what you get. That is my dog. He is uh, all boy. People never give me pop tarts on Halloween. He's loud, he's social. Living the best life. Siblings who enjoy a typical love-hate brother-sister relationship. He's funny, sometimes annoying. <gasps> hey! Toss in a visit from the TV guy and a microphone, and it's game on. Singing is the best, oh, singing is fun. It's better than playing outside in the sun. Yeah, stay dry, yeah. <laughs> that was fun. Kimberly Mall adopted Naya and Luca from Ethiopia, and up until this summer, the family had been living in Michigan. Having kids from Ethiopia, I wanted them to be exposed to more diversity, and we just didn't have that where we were living. Enticed by the warmer weather of the Carolinas and good friends already in the area, Kim decided to relocate to Charlotte and found the perfect home while visiting in the spring. What did you think when, when mom said you guys were gonna leave Michigan and come to North Carolina? Hate it. But then COVID happened. Well, lo and behold, right around closing time, I mean, literally the day we closed was the day after Charlotte had their stay at home order issued. I had kind of counted on them having the summer to meet the neighbor kids and develop friendships before school started. So not having that opportunity um, made it even harder. Working as a public health nurse, Kim was fortunate to land a job over the summer with the Cabarrus Health Alliance at the Mary Francis Wall Academy in Concord. There is one little itsy bitsy bitsy ditsy problem. That problem arose when the school district decided to go full remote learning for the fall. Instant panic. <laughs> Putting Kim and so many other parents like her in a real bind. And then I thought, what am I gonna do with my kids? And I think a lot of parents that I've talked to, that was their first thought is, how am I gonna work? If I work from home, I can't get anything done. I can't help them with their schooling. Um, trying to juggle all of that. Um, and just financially, that, that burden of having to pay for childcare when that wasn't something that was in the budget. Just as she was sorting through the various scenarios, Kim was offered a lifeline of sorts in the form of a newly created program at the local YMCA. Your muscles help you move, and if you didn't have muscles, your bones wouldn't, would be useless, right? They're providing childcare, but they're also helping them with their remote learning, which is beautiful because that's the thing, is you can have a babysitter, but not necessarily somebody who can navigate all of the remote learning. In the Rowan Cabarrus YMCA Association, um, we have six different YMCA's and we're all operating different versions of this program. And the kind of cool thing is it looks different based on the county that you're in. So even in Cabarrus County, we are fully online with our instruction right now for Cabarrus County schools. Uh, versus in Rowan County, they're going to school a couple days a week, so the Rowan programs look a little bit different than ours. At the West Cabarrus branch, the Y Academy groups the kids into four different classrooms with a total of 50 students, all socially distanced, of course. So we have uh, one counselor per room, and then there's like a floating counselor that can kind of go help out. And then whenever you get done with all your stuff, let me know and I'll try to sign you off. One of those counselors is 20-year-old Matthew Hunt, a college student himself and Y youth sports coach. He juggles his own classwork while helping kids out at the Y. Whenever I'm at my apartment learning and teaching and being online just as these kids, I can kind of relate with them and all the struggles that they have to go through, learning the difficulties of navigating uh, the internet with the programs that their school wants them to use. And then I, same thing with me, I have to navigate the programs that my school wants me to use. For Kim, the program has been a godsend in so many ways, including the cost. It's half of what I would have paid a childcare provider through care.com. We offer care from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. So for 11 hours, it's about $25 a day. So maybe about, you know, $2, 250 an hour in that, in that territory. While it's certainly challenging to get younger students like Luca to sit in front of a computer screen for remote learning all day, given our current situation, there's really not much of a choice. It's been tough. I think kids just, they're not meant to sit and learn in front of a computer. That's the thing when, when I go to wake them up in the morning, it's, I can't sit there all day. And, and I feel for them because I, I understand I wouldn't want to either, but 
you know, we have to do that right now. The masks are really hard for me because like sitting, um, like being in a mask all day is like hard, like when you go outside and stuff. It's really hard. So even though Luca, Naya, and probably just about every other kid doing remote learning these days isn't enjoying it, at least there's always after school playtime.